If watching Raised by Wolves got you thirsting for more Ridley Scott-esque sci-fi, don't worry, I've got you covered. In this video, I'll be recapping the first issue of Fire and Stone, a comic series taking place across multiple eras in both the Alien and Predator franchises. Fire and Stone Prometheus, Chapter 1, takes place after the events of Aliens, so spoiler warning for Prometheus and Aliens, both of which are available on HBO Max. On April 7th, 2090, a probe lands on the distant moon LV-223. In four years, this moon will become the final resting place for most of the Prometheus crew. The probe is crushed under the heel of a humanoid figure, a member of the species known as Engineers. 129 years later, or 125 years after the failed Prometheus mission, a new crew makes its way to LV-223. It is now January 12, 2219. Clara Atkinson, a documentarian, has just woken from two years of cryosleep and begins filming their journey. First, she tells the floating camera about their ship. The engine core vehicle, Jerrion, carries three others, command ship Helios, Cadmos, a salvage vehicle, and the patrol ship, Perseus. Angela wants me to record this salvage mission, Clara tells the camera, to document deep space travel in a way that hasn't been done before. Angela Foster is the captain of this mission. She's excited about the mission and tells the camera, My research indicates this desert moon has high-value salvage, a deep space exploration vessel with a huge payload. We land, we salvage, we go home, get rich, and eat better food. Clara then leaves her captain to her meal of liquefied swamp grass chicken substitute and introduces the rest of the crew. James Weddle is a medical doctor. He woke from cryosleep early to check on the ships and crew, or in his words, to check on Clara's exquisite body. Francis Lane is an astrobiologist. Whalen yutani deep space missions like this one all require an astrobiologist. He looks for alien life and helps out medical especially when it comes to constructs and synthetics like Eldon. After Clara leaves, Francis speaks to Eldon over the intercom and asks him to reaffirm a promise. We don't talk about your medical condition, Francis. Not to anyone, Eldon says. Usually the condition is dormant during cryosleep, but this time, Francis says, it's getting worse. Two days later, the rest of the crew has awakened from cryosleep. They enjoy watching Clara's documentary in progress, but with only three hours to landing, the captain excuses herself to go prep. In her chambers, Angela Foster speaks to the camera and reveals the true nature of their mission. Yes, they will salvage what's left of a crashed research vessel, but more than that, Angela intends to continue a mission begun over a century ago. She tells the camera, In 2090, Sir Peter Wayland sent a probe to LV-223. He was searching for something, for a race of people he called the Engineers. He believed they seeded the stars, that they are our creators. In early 2094, Wayland landed here. And Angela continues, he never came back. She intends to complete his mission to discover the true origins of the human species. As the patrol ship lands on LV-223, Chief Security Officer Galgo Helder asks, You sure this is the right damned address? Because I'm thinking maybe we're knocking on the wrong door here. I mean, are you all seeing this? Expecting to land on a desert planet, Galgo is shocked to find a rainforest. While the crew looks in amazement at the unexpected jungle, Angela, the captain, remains focused on finding the salvage site. Things grow stranger when they spot a monkey-like creature hanging from a branch. Meanwhile, James Weddle, the ship's doctor, scans for metal to locate the abandoned exploration vessel. However, he notes, According to Angela's data, it should be around here, but the readings are pure crap. It says metal everywhere. Nearby, another member of their crew spots a pool of oily black substance. Weddell's analysis of it provides few answers. Pure chaos, he says. It's like this stuff can't make up its mind what it is. The discoveries continue as Chief Security Officer Galgo calls Angela over to see something. A killing field full of dead creatures. When Angela wonders what they are, Galgo corrects her. Look at these claw marks, bite marks, some sort of strange burns. Considering the look of these nasty creatures, I'd have to say our big question is, what the hell killed them? Meanwhile, Francis, the astrobiologist, and his construct assistant, Eldon, analyze the black goo. 
Francis decides to collect a sample, saying, These scants, they're unreal. It doesn't just have a genetic makeup. It has every genetic makeup, all mixed together. Some I don't even recognize, but others are very terrestrial, and it's aggressive, churning. James was right. This place is science chaos. Eldon insists they leave it. I don't like it, Francis. Could we leave it alone, please, Francis? However, Francis reminds Eldon of his medical condition. He needs a miracle, and this stuff might be it. Weddell has also found something worthy of further research. Ants. When he found them, the black ants were outnumbered by the white ants 100 to 1. Now, the black ants are winning. So, Weddell takes a sample. After about an hour of searching, they finally find a ship. Though, it's not the one they were looking for. Hadley's hope? Francis asks. Wasn't that an outpost on the neighboring moon, on LV-426? Eldon helpfully reminds them that in 2179, 40 years earlier, the outpost encountered a problem with their processing station. I'll say they had a problem. Damn thing went nuclear, wiped out the whole colony, another member of the crew helpfully adds. Angela and her crew are unaware that the destruction of Hadley's Hope was collateral damage to Ellen Ripley's battle with an alien colony. Angela suggests that perhaps this ship escaped the outpost before it was destroyed. Hoping to find answers inside, she enters an override code into a terminal by the ship's entrance. She is unaware of the horrors that await her inside. And that's where issue one wraps up. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the issue and whether or not you'd like to see me continue my way through the series. And if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell icon for more videos like this one. Every time someone likes or subscribes, it's a big help to the channel and personally gets me even more motivated to make the next video. So I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and see you on the next One Take.